So a little over a week ago, uh, those of us who went to New Orleans uh, got back from the trip. Some of them are in neon. Um, asked them about their uh, asked them about their trip. Uh, it was a wonderful trip. It was a youth gathering for the youth of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, which ended up being 33,000 youth in a super superdome in New Orleans. All Lutheran, um, mostly youth, and those of us who were crazy enough to go with them on this trip. It was a great trip. Um, one thing was the focus, uh, more than I thought it would be. Um, and, and I had heard that this might happen, but it came to be that, that food was one of the major focuses of this trip. Because we learned that you can't just walk into a restaurant and say, table for 17, <laughs> and have them just seat you right away, especially, like I said, when there's 33,000 other youth and adults walking around New Orleans looking for a place to eat. Um, a lot of us mostly at the same time. And so we found food for everyone and then, and then with breakfast, and then we found lunch for everyone. And then before we knew it, there you go. A few hours later, it was time to find dinner for everyone. <laughs> So we had some wonderful food, um, that's for sure, but it got a little bit crazy trying to find food uh, for all of us and try to accommodate all of our needs and all that kind of stuff. We had some great meals and some wonderful restaurants in New Orleans that were really wonderful and accommodating. And um, I've, I've never had a fried oyster at 11.30 at night before, um, but it was great. It was really wonderful. And also, just so you know, Cafe Du Monde is open 24 hours a day. So I ended up at Cafe Du Monde at about, what, 1.30 in the morning, something like that, on Jeff Plumley's birthday. And uh, we sang to him, it was packed, 1.30 in the morning, Cafe Du Monde, because you can't leave New Orleans without going to Cafe Du Monde and having a beignet, right? So there are tons of people there. And I think, though, and you can ask them, <laughs> But I think that most of us who went, even though we had this great food, and even though we had to find food, and all those kinds of things, I think most of us would say that it wasn't about the food. <laughs> it was about the experience of being together and saying table for 17 or 11, or however they were going to split us up that day, and being able to sit together and have that experience. And one of the best meals we had was in a hotel room at midnight, where we all had run through the grocery store in the rain. <laughs> And then we're finally dry and sat and could eat together and talk about the day and the wonderful speakers that we had heard. So even though, you know, it seems like the focus is all about food, because it's important and, and we have to have it, that what happened was we found out that it wasn't actually about the food. It was about sitting down, and it was about being together, and it was about having a powdered sugar fight in the middle of Café du Monde. Um, at 1.30 in the morning. We didn't get kicked out, but I wondered <laughs> a little bit. It was about that experience of community, even though it seemed like we didn't want to leave New Orleans without having a beignet. It was really, we didn't want to leave New Orleans without having one more time together to sit there and enjoy each other's company and be a little crazy and just really experience the, just the love of God that, that we felt, that I felt in that place. We make food a focus sometimes, but that's not really what it's about. We make bread a focus sometimes, like all those people flocking for the beignets. All it is is fried bread, really. <laughs> it's great, but it's just bread. And we make that a focus sometimes of our meals. We have to have something bready to go with it, and when they bring the bread basket to the table, I don't know about you, but our family used to be able to go through one in two minutes flat. When you eat the bread, you just want another piece, right? <laughs> That's why they bring the extra bread baskets around. That's why I think they, um, when they bring you beignets, um, they bring you a stack of something like six. They probably got sick of people ordering one and then saying, I'll have about five others, please, right on my plate. We make bread a focus a lot, but I think it's not about the bread either. But bread is the thing that when we eat one, we just want more, and we know that biologically now, because of all these low-carb diets and stuff, we know that we're genetically, biologically programmed. When we eat a piece of bread, we want another one. It's not enough. This thing that, that we want to fill us up, because it used to be that bread was kind of an afterthought. Bread was hard to make. You could grow your own vegetables. You could catch your own fish. You could raise your own livestock. But bread was hard. It could have taken all day. 
So you had all these things and bread was extra, but now, because we can have it all the time, we want it all the time because that's what we're programmed to do. It's good stuff. In Jesus' time, it wasn't any different. They had had their fill of bread. Do you remember this? This is like 24 hours before. This reminded me of something when he just had to find them more food the next day. It's relentless. He had just fed something like a superdome full of people, 30,000, right? Something like that, with bread and with fish. The feeding of the thousands of people happened 24 hours from this story. They had eaten their fill, it says. They were satisfied with the loaves and with the fish. And 24 hours later, though, they can't find him. And so they get into their fishing boats and they make what looks like a a flotilla of these little boats. Can you see this? They're going across the lake and they're all looking around for Jesus. And when they finally find him, they say, where have you been? We're hungry. (laughs) And Jesus says, you know, (laughs) it's not about the bread. It shouldn't be about the bread. You came looking for me because you're hungry again. Because you ate that bread and now you want some more. And did y'all notice that nobody mentions the very good for you low carb fish? Nobody. He had fed them with fish too, but they don't mention the fish and they're standing on the edge of a lake. If they were hungry, they could have caught something right there. But no, they want the bread. And they want it instantly, and they want Jesus to deliver it to them. So they find him, and he says, that's not what it's about. It's really not. The bread that that I'm going to give you is going to be something different. And they ask him all different ways, give us the bread. It's like Jesus is some sort of waiter for their table, and he won't bring the bread basket back no matter how many times they ask, and they keep saying, we'd like a little more bread, please. We like a little more bread with our dinner. And Jesus keeps saying, it's not about the bread. That's not what it's about. It's about something else. It's about heavenly bread. And they say, well, how can we work for that heavenly bread? (laughs) They don't get it, even when he says over and over again that this bread is different. This bread is heavenly. A few years ago, when I went to Italy uh, with my husband for our 10th anniversary, we heard about this pastry shop. Um, and we were almost done with our trip, but we heard, you got to go to this pastry shop. It's called the Pirates of the Cinque Terre, and it's owned by these two crazy Italian brothers. you got to go to this pastry shop. And what they said was this pastry shop had the best pastry in Italy, which means it's the best pastry in the world, right? So we had to go. So we went there at 10 in the morning, because that's a good pastry time when you're in Italy, and we sat down, and... Uh, They came to take our order, one of the brothers, and we said, can you just bring us your signature pastry? And he said, okay, it's the one that has rice in it. We thought we had misunderstood his accent, and we said, it has rice in it? That sounds a little strange. And he said, don't worry, I am professional. (laughs) So we said, all right, that's fine. Um, He brought us the pastry. That was heavenly bread. (laughs) That was the bread that I hope that I am presented with when I walk through the gates of heaven. (laughs) Because there is no low carb in heaven. And when we walk through the gates, I hope that I receive that heavenly bread or something like that. It was just amazing. I can't even describe it. And and I wonder if that's what the people were thinking, something like that. Um, You know, I worked a long time to get to Italy to taste that bread. And I wonder if the disciples and the crowd around them were thinking, I'd work a long time to get really great bread. I'd work for that bread. I'd I'd work and and I'd slave and and I'd try to get that bread and and how can I do that, Jesus? Maybe they were thinking of croissants or uh, baguettes or something wonderful, this heavenly bread. They still don't understand. Jesus says, finally, when he gets really frustrated and they say yet again, give us this bread, Jesus says, I am the bread. (laughs) He makes it very simple for them. I am your bread. Any other kind you eat, a few hours later, or even in the next minute, you're just going to want some more. You're just going to be hungry again. It's not going to satisfy what you really want. 
So he says to all those people that are like us and, and just want more after we eat part of that, that bread that's so wonderful, he says, I am the bread. I'm what you really want to satisfy your soul. I'm what you want. I'm the bread of life. It's a strange phrase, the bread of life. And I wondered why Jesus used it, the bread of life. And someone has a theory that says it's because of the food pyramid. Well, the food pyramid came out in the 1950s, so that can't be right. (laughs) A little off time there for Jesus' time. But Jesus is saying that he is something like the foundation. I am the bread of life. But I think what he's talking about, instead of something every day, I think he's talking about that thing that we want the most of all. That thing that we want that we think will fill us up. That we sometimes try to fill with bread and then three hours later we're hungry again. That longing that we have, that craving, it says in the Bible, for something to fill us. For something satisfying. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. When you're looking for something, when you're overstuffed and overcarbed and still not satisfied with what, what you want, Jesus says, you can chew on my words for the rest of your life and even beyond. That's what the bread of life means. Something that fills us up because bread, it comes and it goes and it's great and then it's gone and sometimes we don't eat it on diets, all those kinds of things. It comes and it goes, but Jesus is our bread. Jesus is what we really want. It will fill us up and will satisfy us forever, he says. He's the bread of life. Amen.